Uh, thank you. So I'd first like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak here. Um, so um, I'll talk about uh, the determination of uh, an elliptic curve by it's a joint periodic L function. So let's start by talking about the complex L function of an elliptic curve. So given an elliptic curve uh, with conductor N, we can associate an L function um, given by an Euler product that converges absolutely in the right half plane given by real part of S strictly greater than three over two. So it's defined like this. So at primes R not dividing the conductor, uh, we have that the local L factors are one over one minus A R, um, R the power minus S plus R the power one minus two S, where A R is um, R plus one minus the number of points of E over the finite field of R elements. Um, and at primes R dividing the conductor, A R depends on the reduction of E at R. So if uh, E has split multiplicative reduction, then AR is one. Uh, if it has non-split multiplicative reduction, um, then AR is minus one. And if E has additive reduction at R, AR is zero. So this uh, L function, um, as I said, defined on this right half plane, extends to a holomorphic function on the entire complex plane. Uh, which satisfies a functional equation between its values at s and at two minus s. Um, so one can also define the symmetric square L function. So again, it's defined uh, by some Euler product uh, that converges in the real half plane given by real part of s strictly greater than two. So I won't uh, specifically um, define it. Um, so I'll just mention that um, at um, primes R where E has a uh, good uh, reduction, uh, this polynomial here that uh, appears in the Euler uh, product uh, will be um, given by one minus alpha R squared X times one minus beta R squared X times one minus R X. Well, um, alpha R and beta R are the roots of this polynomial uh, x squared, this quadratic polynomial x squared minus a r x plus r with a r is the trace of the Frobenius at r. Um, so um, one can consider twists of this symmetric square L function by uh, Dirichlet characters and just like uh, uh, for the um, uh, usual uh, uh, complex L function we have that this um, admits a holomorphic continuation to the entire complex plane uh, and satisfies a, fun a functional equation between its values at s and three minus s. Um, so, okay, what's the history of uh, the problem of determining elliptic curves by their L functions? Uh, so Faltings uh, showed that um, uh, an L function, uh, uh, the L function of E at s uh, determines uh, the elliptic curve uh, E up to isogeny. Uh, more recent work of uh, Lua Ramakrishnan uh, showed that one can define, um, well, so I, I guess I didn't mention, but one can define a periodic analog of um, the complex L function. And uh, they showed that for the periodic analog, um, we have a similar result that the periodic uh, L function of E at S uh, also determines the elliptic curve um, up to isogeny. So I did mention that um, one can define the symmetric square L function of an elliptic curve. So then a natural question is, can the symmetric square L function also determine the elliptic curve? And um, are there periodic analogs? And do those periodic analogs can also determine the elliptic curve. Uh, so um, the answer is yes. So I'll talk about a periodic analog um, to the symmetric square L function of an elliptic curve. And then uh, I will show that there are special values, so uh, infinitely many uh, special values Cn, such that these values um, 
uh, determine these values of the piadic uh, symmetric square L function determine uh, the elliptic curve uh, up to quadratic twists. Um, so, yes? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's more complicated. So I'll. Yeah, I mean, first, yeah, first of all, I'm talking about the piadic L function, but yeah, it, I mean, um, yeah, so, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about this in more detail. Yes? Yeah, I think that's right. Well, if it's non-zero. <laughs> yeah, so there are results like that. So I'll talk about those. Um, but I'm sort of just um, giving the um, sort of uh, the general um, background uh, for this question here. Um, so yeah, so I, I will try to uh, show that um, for the, uh, if I know infinitely many such special values of the uh, adjoint piadic L function of the symmet so of um, the elliptic curve, then I can say what the elliptic curve is up to quadratic twists. So the theorem uh, is this one. Uh, so given two elliptic curves, E and E prime over Q, uh, and assume they have semi-stable reduction P, and suppose, so I haven't yet defined, I'll talk about what the piadic um, symmetric square L function is, but um, so just uh, take this theorem as given uh, for now. So assume I have uh, such an equality uh, between the piadic symmetric square L function of E at N at, and um, the piadic symmetric square L function of E prime at N. Uh, so I'm allowed to, um, to have this equality up to some constant. And this equality holds for infinitely many integers uh, prime to P. So suppose that this holds, then I can say that E prime is isogenous uh, to a quadratic twist of uh, E. And if uh, both elliptic curves are square free of a, a square free conductor, then um, E and E prime are isogenous. Okay, so um, to solve this problem, I will need to do the connection between the world of elliptic curves and the world of Castle automorphic representations. Um, so to an elliptic curve E of conductor N, uh, we can associate a holomorphic new form uh, F of weight two and level N. Uh, so there's uh, a relation between the Fourier coefficients of f and the uh, terms that appear in the Dirichlet series. So uh, the L function of E um, has a Dirichlet series expansion um, given by sum from n equal one to infinity of c n and the bar minus s, where c n are exactly these Fourier coefficients. Um, so now to, um, to this new form F, I can associate a unitary Caspian automorphic representation uh, pi of GL2 over Q that has trivial character and conductor N. 
So there's a relation between the L function of the elliptic curve um, at S plus one half and the L function of the cuspid automorphic representation associated uh, to E at S. So we have um, something like this. So as, as I mentioned, we are interested in the symmetric square L function. So for the symmetric square L function of uh, E at S, uh, we have that that equals uh, the symmetric square L function of pi at S minus one. So there exists an automorphic representation of GL3 uh, called the symmetric square of pi uh, such that the symmetric square L function of pi at S minus one is equal to the symmetric square, uh, the, the standard L function of the symmetric square of pi at S minus one. So this automorphic representation is what's called an isobaric representation of GL3. Um, and so this is not necessarily cuspidal. It's cuspidal only if uh, E is not um, of CM type. Um, so I'll just briefly discuss what happens in, in the CM type and then from now on we'll sort of assume that E is not CM, though everything works uh, in the CM case as well. So. Uh, if I have an elliptic curve uh, of uh, CM type, then that means that uh, the endomorphism ring of E tensored by Q um, will be some imaginary quadratic field. And in this case, the L function of E at S equals the L function of some unitary Hecke, Hecke character of um, the Edel class group of this uh, quadratic field K imaginary quadratic field K uh, at S minus one half. Uh, so then we can consider the uh, induction from K to Q of uh, this character, eta. And so this will be uh, a cuspidal uh, automorphic representation of GL2 over Q. And then if we look at the symmetric square of pi, um, this will be isomorphic to the induction from K to Q of eta squared isobaric sum with eta zero where eta zero is the restriction of eta to Q. So then using this isomorphism, we get that the L function of the symmetric square of pi at S is a product of uh, the L function of pi prime, which pi, pi, pi prime is um, this cuspid automorphic um, representation of GL2 given by the induction from K to Q of eta squared uh, times the L function of eta zero at S, uh, where eta zero is the restriction of eta to Q. Okay, so uh, this is what happens in the CM uh, case. So uh, as I said, uh, things pretty much work the same uh, uh, in the CM case, but just for simplicity, uh, for this talk, um, this is everything I'll say about the CM case and just assume that the elliptic curve is not of CM type from now on. Okay, so how do we show uh, the theorem? Um, so the, the first step is uh, I want to reduce the problem to showing that the values of the complex symmetric square L function of E twisted by um, P power characters at value two, at critical value two, uh, determine uh, the elliptic curve up to quadratic twists. Um, and then, so we want to move to the automorphic uh, representation world and show that um, showing the problem is actually just uh, a consequence of showing that the values of um, the symmetric square L function of pi twisted by chi as chi ranges over p power characters um, determine uh, pi um, up to uh, twist by a quadratic character. So here pi is uh, just like I mentioned before is the representation of GL2 associated to the elliptic curve. Okay, so I want to reduce the problem to showing this 
So then I want to actually show this. So I want to show that the symmetric square L function of pi twisted by chi is non-vanishing for infinitely many uh, uh, p power uh, characters chi. And then I want to show that the values actually determine uh, pi uh, up to twist by a quadratic character. Okay, so these are the main steps of um, the proof. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, so um, now I'll sort of go back and talk about how uh, we define um, the uh, joint piadic L function of an elliptic curve um, and sort of explain how the steps actually uh, go in more detail. So I fix an odd prime uh, such that uh, E is an elliptic curve with semi-stable reduction at P. Uh, so then I look at uh, the, the set of all characters from ZP star into CP star. Um, ZP star uh, is isomorphic to um, one plus PZP cross uh, Z mod PZ star. So then we can think of um, the set of all continuous characters um, from ZP star as a product of characters on Z mod PZ star and characters on one plus PZP. And so the characters uh, here are, call, are called wild piadic characters and they can be identified with um, um, Dirichlet characters of conductor uh, P to some power. Okay, so uh, Dabrowski and Del Borgo construct a piadic analog uh, to the uh, symmetric square L function of an elliptic curve, um, which I sort of defined earlier. Um, so it's, um, this piadic analog is defined as the Mellin truss form of a piadic distribution uh, defined on ZP star. Um, so to define the piadic uh, distribution, uh, you do that by interpolating the values of the complex symmetric square L function at all twists by uh, the characters of P power order. Okay, so before I actually talk about um, how the distribution is defined, um, so one thing that is sort of crucial in the definition and the properties um, is this um, Vishik's theory of H admissible measures. So we have, um, we say that a measure is bounded if it satisfies this property that the uh, Piatic absolute value of the integral of a plus uh, p and z over a plus p and z p of d mu is bounded for all n and a uh, relatively prime to p. And we say that a measure is h admissible if it satisfies um, this growth condition. So we have bounded measures and we have h admissible measures. So um, the set of H admissible measures when H is equal to one is strictly larger, but contains all the bounded measures. Okay, so um, to define um, the distributions that I mentioned earlier, uh, so uh, as I said, you interpolate the values of the complex symmetric square L function uh, of the elliptic curve twisted by all P power uh, characters at um, this special value two. So it's defined like this. So uh, I should say, so this is in the case when E has good reduction at P. Um, so it's uh, the int it, mu P is defined such that uh, the integral over a wild uh, piadic character chi integrated over ZP star um, is equal to this. So uh, alpha p, um, as I said, here is the root of this quadratic polynomial. Uh, tau of uh, chi bar is just the Gauss sum. And here I have some dependence on the conductor of chi and so the symmetric square L function. So if E has good ordinary reduction at P, the distribution mu P is a bounded measure. Um, 
And if E has super singular reduction at P, then mu P is a two admissible measure. Um, so in the case when E has bad multiplicative reduction at P, um, and um, we can define the distribution mu P uh, as follows. So again, uh, we consider uh, the Mellon transform. So I integrate uh, chi over uh, ZP star, and I uh, consider the distribution such that this is equal to uh, some constant that depends on the elliptic curve, a Gauss sum squared um, conductor of um, chi and the, L, uh, the symmetric square uh, L function of E twisted by chi of two. So in this case, uh, the distribution is actually a bounded measure. Um, and then once uh, this distribution is defined, uh, we define the piatic L function of um, the adjoint piatic L function to be uh, just sort of the integral uh, over Z, integrate over ZP star of chi x um, diamond x um, the power s, where diamond is that diamond of, um, x is x over uh, the Teichmuller character. Okay, so this is how the piatic the adjoint piatic L function of an elliptic curve is defined. So. Uh, using the properties of um, H admissible measures, um, I show the following. So I show that if I have an equality between the adjoint piatic L function uh, of the elliptic curve uh, at N and um, the uh, joint piatic L function of the symmetric uh, of uh, E prime at N uh, for infinitely many N relatively prime to P then this will give me uh, an equality of this form uh, between the complex symmetric square L functions of E and E prime. So here um, I have some constant and then some constant that depends on, uh, raised to some power that depends on the conductor of um, chi. And so this equality will hold for infinitely many P power characters. Oh yeah, this should be just L, sorry. Um, so once I prove this lemma, um, I can further with some more work, I can reduce um, uh, the main result. Um, so using this equality um, that holds for infinitely many N, I can show that this uh, will be a consequence of showing that uh, I have some uh, result on the determination of cuspid automorphic representations of GL3. So more precisely, I will show that if I have pi a cuspid automorphic representation of GL3, then uh, L of pi twisted by chi at one uh, is non-vanishing um, for infinitely many uh, P power characters and moreover, um, I have an even stronger result that uh, these values uh, determined by up to isomorphism. So it turns out that that is enough um, for me to get uh, the initial theorem. So let me just mention some motivation for and some previous work done on similar problems. Um, so as I said here, I'll, um, one of the consequences will be showing a non-vanishing result uh, of L of pi twisted by chi uh, as chi ranges over um, P power characters. Um, so some history on, on that. So if I look at a cusp automorphic representation of GLN over some number field, um, Rorley show that uh, when N is equal to two, there exists infinitely many ray class characters chi such that L of pi twisted by chi is non-vanishing at any uh, fixed, so I can fix some complex number and as I vary over all uh, characters, I find infinitely many uh, such non-vanishing um, L values. So by work of uh, Barthel and Ramakrishnan, um, 
so what they show is that when n is greater than or equal to three, um, there exist infinitely many uh, uh, ray class characters such that L of pi twisted by chi at S zero is non-vanishing. Uh, for any fixed S zero uh, complex number um, outside sort of, such that the real part of S zero is outside the interval given by one over N uh, to one minus one over N. So moreover, if pi is tempered, they show that this interval can, can be improved um, to uh, two over N plus one to one minus two over N plus one. Um, and so Luo showed um, that uh, if we fix the number field to be Q, uh, then the interval can be further improved unconditionally. And more, specific, uh, more specifically, um, he showed non-vanishing at the center uh, uh, when uh, N is equal to three. So later work focused on sparser, uh, sparser sets of characters. So you twist, but you don't include all characters, just sparser sets. Okay, so my theorem that I show is the following. Um, so I show that if pi and pi prime are two unitary cusp automorphic representations of GL3 that have the same uh, central character, and I have such an equality between the twisted L values at some fixed beta, uh, in this interval, um, then uh, pi is isomorphic to pi prime. So for the elliptic curve case, I only need beta equal to one, but I'm able to show better here. Um, so if pi and pi prime are tempered, um, this interval can be further improved. So a consequence of this is that if pi and pi prime are um, uh, cusp automorphic representations of GL2, um, then, I, and I have such an equality between the L functions of the adjoint uh, of pi and the adjoint of pi prime uh, for beta in the same intervals, I get that pi is isomorphic to pi prime up to a quadratic twist. And again, I can do better if pi and pi prime are both tempered. So let me just mention uh, something about the proof. Uh, so the difficulty of the proof of um, the second theorem that I mentioned comes from the fact that the set of uh, p power characters is sparse. Um, so what I do is I, I can do the first steps uh, for GLN. So I look at a cosmological automorphic representation of GLN. It has some Dirichlet series expansion like this. If pi is tempered, then we have such an asymptotic bound for the coefficients of uh, the Dirichlet series. And even if we uh, don't have that pi is tempered, we have uh, this asymptotic bound uh, unconditionally. So using this and some other ingredients, I'm able to show a twisted average. So I'm able to show that um, as I sum over uh, primitive p power order characters of conductor PVA uh, of um, chi bar of S times um, chi R of L, um, chi uh, of R times L of pi twisted by chi at some beta in this interval, this asymptotically will be of the order of P to the A times uh, this value on the right hand side. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think I have time to go into the de details of the proof. Um, so, but basically, uh, you do that by considering uh, an approximate functional equation and uh, uh, sort of looking at um, summing uh, uh, this over all characters, uh, p power or the characters uh, of conductor PDA and estimating the error and the leading terms. Um, so once I show the twisted average, um, there's still a bit of uh, work to, uh, that needs to be done. Uh, so uh, you, you get that uh, the, um, uh, the coefficients of the Dirichlet series for pi and pi prime are equal uh, for all m relatively prime to uh, p. And once you do that, um, it's, it's basically enough 
uh, to be able to show that the local L factors of the two representations pi and pi prime um, are equal at almost all places. So then you can apply the strong multiplicity theorem to get the result. Um, so just some final remarks. So there are difficulties when you try to generalize some of the results that I mentioned here. So if you look at GLN when n greater than or equal to four, you can get a non-vanishing result. So um, the twisted average when I look at S equal to R will give me um, that L of pi twisted by chi at beta in this interval fixed uh, is non-vanishing for infinitely many uh, P power or their characters. Um, and this holds for GLN, uh, not just GL3, but it's not enough to get that uh, uh, it determines um, the form pi. Uh, so other difficulties that arise uh, is if you look at an arbitrary Caswell tomorphic representation and consider M power uh, of um, of pi, this is not necessarily automorphic. Um, there's also no construction of periodic L functions for the mth power of uh, the symmet mth symmetric power of an elliptic curve, even though there, there is some work um, of periodic L functions that, that can be constructed for um, representations for GLN. Um, and there's no construction of periodic L functions for mth power uh, symmetric. Uh, of the elliptic curve. Okay, so. Uh, well, so for the, on the automorphic side, it's one half. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so, so, so for a, a, a half, you have, a, well, any, anywhere, actually. So, mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. So, for, 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 for L3, corresponding to GL3 as a, you know, is a, a non vanishing subgraph for any half. Right. Yeah, so there, there, there is more work on that, but I didn't mention everything. I just sort of mentioned the beginning of that.